How's it going? So in a minute, we're going to do the fall 2021 AMC 12A problem 14. Before I get started, I want to do a quick shout out to another channel, Professor Rob Bob. If you don't know already, he's an icon as far as uh, pre-calculus goes and now calculus goes. Uh, he's also possibly a machine. He puts out like a video a day right now for calculus, or he was recently. I couldn't believe how much content he puts out. If you're in Calc AB or BC, you might want to check out his channel. He's got uh, dwarfs my, my subscriber count. He's got hundreds of thousands of subscribers because he creates such good content. And you can go there, search up on his channel the things you're trying to learn if you're struggling with a calculus concept. I highly recommend you give it a shot. So let's get started here. In the figure equilateral hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F, has three non-adjacent acute interior angles, these ones, that each measure 30 degrees. The enclosed area of the hexagon is six root three. What is the perimeter of the hexagon? I thought about two approaches. One is to look internal. If this is 30 and I cut it off here, here, and here, I suspect this is equilateral. It probably is. And um, so then I thought you could do maybe half AB sine of C to get you the areas of these three pieces, somehow find this length, cutting in half probably with 15, using sine of 45 minus 30, uh, sum and difference formulas from trig, and then going that route. Ultimately, I don't know, I ended up just calling this 2x. I thought I might be dividing it later. And what I decided was, what if I went to the outside? Like, what if I went like this? So I come to here, I come over to here, I come over to here. And by the way, these are my original solutions. They may or may not be the fastest way. There could have been some really cool like method that people might know online. Like you, if you have one, leave it in the comments. I don't have any problem. You're not showing me up, man. We've all got strengths and weaknesses and you guys might know another way. Um, I see you guys comment from time to time with really good methods. That's great. Let's all learn from each other. That's wonderful. So um, yeah, so what I did next was I said, okay, if this is 30, and this blue triangle that I drew, it's kind of blue, is equilateral, this will be 15 and 15. And 15 and 15 makes this angle 150. So what I thought was, let's find this side out here, S. And I will do S squared root three over four. And then I will subtract the three triangles here, which would be three times half a b sine of 150. And I thought that would be easier. So let's see how that would look. I would need to find this S first. How am I going to get it? Let's go law of cosines. I'm going to call it S squared equals, it's kind of like Pythagorean, it's this squared plus this squared. You're going to get 4x squared plus 4x squared minus 2 times the base of those two terms. If they're a squared and b squared, it would be a and b. For us, that's 2x and 2x. How do we know it's both the same? It's equilateral. It tells us all the sides are the same, and we don't know the actual side length, right? So uh, you can call it whatever you want, and then in terms of variables. And so you've got uh, 2 times 2x times 2x, and then you're going to have cosine of 150. If you're doing the AMC 12, you better know your unit circle values fairly quickly. The cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2, but we're in quadrant 2. It's going to be negative root 3 over 2. So negative root 3 over 2, um, positive, positive, cancel, cancel. If that feels like chastising a little, it a little bit is. You should probably be a little bit chastised to go then, and I'm not trying to mock you. It's about motivating you to go get that kind of level where you can quickly answer those pieces so that you have the skill set you need to qualify for the AIME. Um, don't feel bad, I mean, to the point of where you just give up, but just go try and get that access. Try and memorize the unit circle if you don't know it. So, uh, what do we got? S squared is going to be 8x squared. This is a plus sign now with 4x squared root 3. So I've got S squared is 8x squared plus 4x squared root 3. Great. What do we do with that? We're going to drop it right here in S squared and divide by 4 immediately to get 2x squared plus x squared root 3. We've got times root 3 minus. Now, how are we going to do this? It's going to be 3 halves 
A and B are 2x and 2x. What's the sine of 150? The same as the sine of 30, 1 half. So you've got 1 half here. You're going to cancel these 2s with these 2s. What does that give us? Root 3 distributed. 2 root 3x squared plus 3x squared minus... Oh, what's that? There's an x and x and a 3. All the 2s have already canceled. You get minus 3x squares. This goes goodbye. This is your area. It's equal to 6 root 3. I'm trying to explain fast. I know most of you that are watching are really fast thinkers and I'm trying to speak at your pace that you can understand. If you're not going as fast, feel free to rewind the video and watch that part again to follow what I did. So 2 root 3x squared is going to equal 6 root 3. So I'm going to divide by 2 root 3. I'm going to get x squared equals 3. I'm going to divide or square root rather to get x equals root 3. Had it not been associated with a geometric shape, negative root 3 would be accessible as well. Root 3 is x. I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh, 12 x is what you have. So I need 12x, which will be equal to 12 root 3 perimeter over here. It's answer choice E. Thanks for watching. I will try and film as much as I can. I'm about to start work here in a short amount of time. I'll see what else I can film before then. Otherwise, we'll get to it when we get to it. You guys have a good one.